Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to the Wrestle Plug YouTube channel. It's time for this lot. NXT TakeOver, of course, is tonight, which means it's time for predictions. Carl Wilkinson's still a well. We're not quite sure where he is. Some say he may be buried in some hole in Canada called Tim Hortons. No idea. Who are them Tim Hortons, eh? But ultimately, I am Aaron Nix, and joining me in his absence is, of course the master of Sly Fox Sports podcast itself, and of course my illustrious co-host over there, and somebody who does check in from time to time and has been helping me out no end at the wrestle plug. It is, of course, Jeremy the Sly Fox Miller. Thank you, good sir. You're very welcome. Right, let's get right into it. This is right, a nice let's get it. Quick fire NXT takeover. If this goes longer than 10 minutes, I apologize, and I will make sure that Jeremy is ceremoniously executed in front of all of his family so <clears throat> starting <laughs> with it's war games baby or as Fuck you war games. would say war games <laughs> fucking uh, regal oh i love it oi right oi. Uh, five <laughs> matches oi <laughs> five matches which is normally <laughs> the case of course with takeover starting with timothy thatcher versus tommaso champa in what will no doubt be a very hard hitting affair who you got oh uh, I think Thatcher's going to win this because I think this is going to be Tommaso Ciampa's last takeover. You think Tommaso Ciampa is main roster bound? I think he is main roster bound, and I think that he needs to be main roster bound because mm. he's pretty much done everything in NXT. The only thing he hasn't accomplished is the North American title. And honestly, he's too good for the North American that, title he? right now. Right. He Doesn't needs to go up to the main roster – and he needs to play with boys like Kevin Owens. He needs to play with boys like, I don't know, fucking Drew McIntyre. Let's throw him right in the title picture. Let's have Keith Lee and Tommaso Ciampa on a proper fucking pay-per-view. Yeah, I'll have some of that. Uh, I've got Tommaso Ciampa winning this, however. Um, they don't seem to be that hot on Timothy Thatcher. I think Timothy Thatcher is the right person to win this match, and I think Tommaso Ciampa could do with a call-up sooner rather than later. There's not much else for him to do here. I'm really enjoying his gimmick right now, and that is, of course, that everyone's self-entitled, and they need to be they need respect beaten into them. Uh, I think Ciampa wins this, um, but he's also kind of been Thatcher's fawn, hasn't he? You know, Thatcher tapped out to Kushida recently on NXT because yes. of Tommaso Ciampa's interference, so you might be right in the sense of do you know what actually i am gonna flip i'm gonna go with timothy thatcher because i feel like he's jobbed out quite a bit lately and it doesn't spell anything good for him if he loses this match so i'll stick with thatcher too on that basis now moving on to something that's going to be a little bit more feisty in a different regard a strap match between dexter loomis and to the moon Cameron Grimes, baby! Oh, yes, indeed. Who you got? Um, I I don't like Dexter Loomis. What? I don't. I don't. I don't think he's. How can you not like serial killers in wrestling? I he was great in Impact, but fucking, I think Cameron Grimes needs the push, and. Going over Loomis in this strap match will give him credibility. He he should have won the North American title instead of Damian Priest, but Priest honestly deserved that title yeah, too. Been, so, fire, mate. um, Grimes needs a push. So I'm going to say that Grimes wins this, and then he's going to be the next one to go after the North American title. It's a good shout. It's a good shout. I think Grimes wins. Dexter Loomis technically won the House of Horror match they had, which was really fun. One of the highlights of the year for me was um, Cameron Grimes trying to get on the undead zombie in the shower, thinking it was Dexter Loomis's sister, only to be revealed as basically a zombie, and that freaked him out even more. That was one of the highlights of the year for me. He was like, I didn't realize that Dexter had a sister. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? The, the so other one that from that was when he, you know he saw oh god what's his name the the indian um referee yes yes and he saw him like foaming at the mouth and just like oh, you know half dead and then the next week he sees him he's like oh what, what, no wait what <laughs> i think cameron grimes is a huge star i do um i loved him in impact yeah. and i think he's just he needs to TNA go. DNA superstar. To the moon, baby. 
<laughs> I love his. I love him. Do you know what he would have been so good back in the day in the old NWA? Oh he fuck, been a monster in there. Uh, yeah, I've got him winning. I actually really like Dexter Loomis's character. There's something quite. I still like Samuel Shaw and the whole bedroom fiasco. That's great. Stuff. I said, "What are you doing in my bedroom?" It's just it's it's money for me. I love it. I love ridiculous shit like this. This is certainly going to be the more amusing portion of the card uh, for yeah. the North American Championship. Leon Ruff defends his championship in a triple threat against Johnny Gargano and everyone's favorite big meaty leather trouser clad bastard Damian Priest. All right. I'm going to go out on a limb. I think Ruff retains. And the reason I think Ruff retains Please go is because the guy, the, the person that's in the um, scream mask, the ghost face mask. Oh, yeah, this weird shenanigan thing that yeah. Johnny Gargano has been using. I think that that person's going to get revealed and attack Johnny. Do you reckon it'll be Leon Ruff? No, I think it'll be... <laughs> that would be amazing um, if he goes under the ring and then he just comes back out as the scream guy. Oh, that would be hilarious. Prepare for a diddle to behold. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking um, great if he just went proper murderous. I, I think it'll be one of these newer guys that are getting brought in. Yeah. Maybe, you know, a bit, maybe the make it Ridge Holland. Yeah, Ridge he... Holland. Yeah, I know he picked up quite a nasty injury, I think. And that's why he hasn't been seen for a while because he was kind of being used as one of um, uh, Pat McAfee's boys, He's, you know? Yeah, he was going to be man. one of Pat McAfee's Ridge boys. Ridge Holland, of course, body. formerly of rugby league uh, greatness over here, rugby league mm. player in England. Um, because that's what they need yeah. more rugby league players, mate, <clears throat> right. Right. Um, I think Damian Priest. See, I, I, I would want to say Priest needs to come up because they need more big guys in the main roster. Mm. But then I look at a guy like Johnny Gargano, and he deserves greatness, honestly. It's fantastic, isn't he, Johnny Gargano? He is Mr. Takeover. He found he himself Mr. a little bit as well in this kind yes. of – this new role as a as a heel, and I at the start I thought, oh, do I like this or not? But him and Candice have become like this fantastic comedy power, power couple. couple. Like it just works beautifully. It does. Yes. Um, I, um, I don't want Leon Ruff to win, not because I don't like the kid. He's obviously very talented. His gimmick is that he's basically a very shit scared Norman Smiley. Um, which is fine, you know. Um, for anyone who remembers the legend that is him, uh, Luke oh, Minton, God. by the way, was Rich Holland's name, and he was a professional rugby league player. Um, so oh, there nice. you go, okay. yes. Um, yeah, he, um, I don't know. Oh, he played for Hull Kingston Rovers, of course, he did. He's from Hull, um, oh, uh, sorry. yeah, how very northern of you, sir. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, oh, this is a hard one to pick. I, I think you're right again. Like I, you know, normally I like to we like to have a bit of a difference of opinion, but I think you're right, right because Damian Priest Priest only just lost it to Gargano, and then immediately lost it in his like first defense to Leon Ruff, which was a bit weird. So they've which, kind of, to I be don't fair, like that... the fact they're volleying this title around as yeah. if it's like you know they're kind of using it in a, in a very similar way to the TNT Championship over in AEW, where at first when they hold it, it's for a while. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, who needs it? You need it. It's a good prop. Here you go. And it's become, I don't like titles being props for people. Right. Um, so it would actually probably benefit the belt if Leon Ruff somehow came out on top. And maybe that's why this is a triple threat to try and make it easier for Leon Ruff to pick up the win because there can be shenanigans on either side. Be interested to see who the person is revealed to be in the screen mask, because I don't think it is Ridge Holland, just because of the sheer size of him. And he's actually been a bit more of a slender person under the Right. Mask. I know that the female ghost face is Indy Hartwell. Yes, they've revealed that already, haven't they? Right. But, but then obviously Gargano the came out and said there's another one, didn't he? Yes. And we don't know who that is. Ridge Holland would probably make sense from a size perspective, but I'd like to think it's going to be someone a little bit more exciting like somebody we, like you say somebody we haven't seen yet you know it'd be very cool if it was someone like desmond xavier or zachary wentz if there was that two would be them, cool you know if both of them unveiled themselves as, 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 as say one of them like attacks and then you think oh we're gonna see who it is and then another one comes out like wait a minute i thought there was only one oh now there's two wait a minute there's three of them who's who and then all of a sudden like the rascals are underneath oh that'd be sick but you know right. um, it'll be interesting to see how they use those guys when they yes. do it. They, come up, they have just signed so there's there is the possibility they might there is a possibility 
there is. But um, yeah, uh, I don't like agreeing with you for the sake of obviously competition, but I think <laughs> you're right. So I will go begrudgingly with Norman Smiley, aka Leon Ruff. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the funny thing with Leon Ruff was he, you know, you hear about him, he, he he's no one. Who, who the hell was this guy? He, he made a few and, fleeting appearances. He actually, believe it or not, been on Raw a couple of times. Yeah, he was on Rob like a couple of times. When, they first, they... when the pandemic first kicked in and they were struggling to find people to do jobs and stuff, they actually used him a couple of times. So he's yeah. mostly anyway, known we're for trying to keep it short. Okay, I'm <laughs> we're sorry. Trying... God damn it! You can you'll have plenty of time to talk in the review because I'm sure Kyle Wilkinson will not have reemerged before then. Um, That's true. So we main event, of course, with uh, for me two fantastic main events here: War Games. <laughs> oh. and we will start with what I think is going to be an absolute bomb burner: the women's War Games match. Team Shotzi, Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Rhea Ripley, and Io Shirai. Oh, so true, sir. Versus mm. Team Candice, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai. Raquel Gonzalez and Tony Storm. My apologies, but Dakota Kai is quite literally perfection. I uh, and I've said this many a time on the podcast. You are welcome to slide into my DMs anytime you like, Miss Kai. Um, and um, and you can get stay. a hold of BRE. They'll they'll BRE start. But yeah, um, this this is going to be a stonker, mate. Oh, the talent in this. By the way, AEW, that's how you do women's wrestling properly, you dickheads. Mm. Um, this is fucking... I'm sorry how anyone can tell me that NXT is not... like Impact's fantastic. They do great women's wrestling as well, but this is the <sighs> next level shit. Yeah. You've got eight of the best women's wrestlers in the world inside a double steel cage, basically. What, yes. what, what's not to like? Oh, and I swear, we're going to see a top of the cage spot from one of these girls. Oh, yeah. Io Shirai's going to do a moonsault again. Oh, yeah. Eo's going to do that moons. Oh, yeah. oh, the genius oh. of the sky shall be unleashed once again. Who you got on this? <sighs> tough one to pick. It's tough. One. It That's is. It's hardest. tough because the hardest pick of all of them. It's tough because I think this is going to be a a go home for a couple of these girls. Yeah, I, I think really Tony is. Storm is going to be on her way up, and I really? think Rhea Ripley. I think Tony Storm's staying for a while. You think? Yeah, I. She's I, I, just made her way I, I back from NXT. I don't think it's going to be Ember Moon. She just no, came back. She just came back as well. I think Rhea um, Ripley's going up. That has been Rhea Ripley for been sure. On the cards for a while. Yeah, Rhea Ripley for sure. Un- the only other person I could see going up would be Candice, because you ain't going to take Shotzi. Shotzi just came into the fold. Really. Yeah, she seems to have been quite busy in that time. Now, also, it should be pointed out that there is a lot of teasing that there will be a brand new tank for her entrance at oh, this show as well. Uh, nice. There's been some vignettes where she's had the mask down and she's been doing a lot of welding and stuff because obviously yes, the tank was. Because that's when so Rhea so. showed up in Amber yeah. and yep. Um, Khan, you got to pick somebody. Go, I'm going to go with Team Shotzi. I am going to pick the women's heel team because I'm in okay. love with Dakota Kai mm. uh, and for no other reason uh, also I, I do you know who I really love who doesn't get nearly enough appreciation Raquel Gonzalez I think she's, oh, God, yes. she's a monster she's beautiful she's got everything her and Rhea Ripley when they were wrestling I was like oh my god Muji Hoss is for women oh my god uh, mm-hmm. I was just getting so mm-hmm. excited I love Hoss Hoss more Hoss god damn it get rid of all these vanilla the, the so, one that I would have loved to see was Raquel Gonzalez and Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, that would have been fucking sick as well. I actually would have oh. liked to see Mercedes Martinez used there. But what the fuck happened to her? Retribution. No, I haven't seen her. You haven't seen Retribution, mate. <laughs> I have seen Retribution. I haven't seen her. No, on no, 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 you haven't. They're not, they're not there, remember? They're not, they're not there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Got your mouth. Right, right. Mouth. right. I am. Um, <laughs> I don't want one of their Twitter Put your accounts whole mouth. getting feisty with us. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to go with a heel women's team because I just have no clue how to call it, and I'm kind of very partial to Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, and I just root for them in everything that they do. But I expect this to be five star. I do. I expect this. Oh to yeah, be I expect this. Incredible. I expect this entire takeover to be five star. Oh, I mean, what takeover isn't amazing? I'm sorry, but takeover is the best. Like the only car, the only match on the card that I could see being a stonker would be maybe Loomis and Grimes. 
And that's when all you say, because... do you mean a stinker, not a stonker? Yeah, stink... Over here, a stonker means, whoa, that's a stonker, that is. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah. War uh... games. Um, right. War games. Right. right, well, we wrap it up with the men's war games match, of course. It will be the undisputed era, of course. Adam Cole, baby. Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Fish taking on the awesome team of Pat McAfee. Team McAfee, which will actually be Pat McAfee again, making his second wrestling uh, appearance after his incredible match with Adam Cole. Got to give the man love. He looks good in the ring. And he'll be, yes. teamed, of course, with Peter, <laughs> Pete Dunn, Oni Lorcan, and, of course, Danny Birch, who are Danny the Birch. Tag Team Champions. Undisputed Era <sighs> come into this match, undefeated in war games. Pat McAfee's team will have the man advantage. No, they're not undefeated in war games. They lost last year. Did they really? They lost to Tom- Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, wait, no, that was a match, wasn't it? That was Champa and Colt, wasn't it? War games last year wasn't. That, no, was that no, it was Champa. It was Team Champa versus the Undisputed Era. Was it? Oh, okay. Because Kevin Owens was the fourth member of Team Champa. Oh yeah, fucking yeah! You've, no, you've done me. So there. technically, do you, do you know who told me undisputed era undefeated in war games matches? Carl Wilkinson. Ooh. Yeah, yeah I took saucy, your word for saucy. it. Saucy, saucy Canadian scum. What <laughs> 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 them Tim Hortons here? Eh? <clears throat> right, tell because... that English person he'll do whatever he's told. Eh? Um, yeah. What do you think? Who you got for this one? Does I, I'm get, so get I'm so them? broken because I don't. I think this is the era's last takeover. I do. I think this is where they come up and they're going to just run rough shot over either SmackDown or Raw. Or both. Fuck it. Let's let them just run over all both uh, both of them. Just keep just like they did and <laughs> kind, kind of go up against Retribution. Adam Cole joins Retribution. Adam Cole versus Mustafa Ali. Winner yeah. becomes Retribution. Oh. Now, there will I'm... be no T bar anymore, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, poor T bar. Poor T bar. Fucking. Dio. Oh, we've got one of the best natural pure athletes in the history of wrestling. Let's call him T bar. <laughs> <Fuck's sighs> <sake>. not, <laughs> not everything is a hit, Vinnie Mac. Not everything. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Okay. Um, you got? You got to pick someone. I've got the brand. You got I've the got brand. McAfee. Dunn, Birch, and Lurkin. That's a I great think these, pick. I think these guys are going to take over for the Undisputed Era. This is going to be their match yeah. where they become the the new yeah, faction. Dirty heels, whereas Undisputed Era are now faces, aren't they? Like... Right. So I think this is going to set up... I think we're going to see Pete Dunn going over and trying to beat the living shit out of... Uh, Finn Balor soon enough. And I think Pat McAfee is going to turn up and say, right, you're the North American champion, right? Fuck off. I Pat want that McAfee's belt. He's going to be North American champion. <laughs> I think Pat McAfee is going to, I mean, shit, we made Gronk. Yeah, I'd actually be okay title. with that. I actually think that would be really, do you know what? He is the first person who isn't technically a wrestler, so to speak, who I think is fantastic in this role. And to his credit, he is trained by Rip Rogers, who is one of the all-time greats. And he has actually, and you saw that, his match with Adam Cole is actually the greatest match from someone who isn't born into the business that I've ever seen. I genuinely thought it was amazing. I thought Stephen Amell did a good job at SummerSlam. That blew it out of the water by some I thought, I thought Pat McAfee was going to win that match. I really did. You've got the era. Undisputed, baby, taking home the win. I um I I I like the brand. I loved obviously the Brits, man. Pete Dunn, Danny Birch, Martin Stone, the governor on the independent scene over here. Somebody got a lovely photo with him. Um if I have yes. the time, I'll um there you go, right there. Lovely photo. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the fact I can do that. Um, but ultimately, uh, I, I do fancy the Undisputed Era, even if they are going to... I kind of hope they are going up. Because I'll tell you what, though. I think main roster WWE has been great lately. Raw and SmackDown has actually been really good. And it doesn't actually need the Undisputed Era. But if you put Undisputed Era on Raw... Oh, it's a, oh fucking... <laughs> Raw, mate. Just, oh, I'll be raw, mate, from beating myself off ferociously. I, I'll I be think ready for it. More on SmackDown. No, 
put them on Raw. I don't want them getting anywhere near Roman Reigns because he'll squash them. And I don't want that. I want them on Raw because there's a lot more clarity. And also, I feel like Drew... Don't get me wrong. I love Roman Reigns. And he's been amazing in his current role. But I feel like the Undisputed Era will have more ability to run over things on Raw. Because it'll... Drew McIntyre's the kind of guy who won't mind them getting one over on him a lot more. If you got Roman Reigns right now uh, in creative and you say, we're going to bring these four much smaller guys in to run you over as a faction, it'll be like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> it's not happening, is it, really? It's I'm not- the head of the fucking table. Although, I'm the tribal era, chief. Undisputed Era versus the Samoan SWAT team would be oh, fucking oh, sexy oh, shit. But imagine the Usos, Roman Reigns, and who do we put in? Do we put Samoa Joe in there? Um, no. Like, uh, unless you, you want to bring have... Jacob Bar too from MLW, that would be pretty fucking saucy. I think, that's but he's actually he's signed well... to a very long-term contract. At MLW. Oh, is he? He's off the table. He's on a five-year deal, I believe. So Jesus, uh, he's going to be out for a while, or at least not available for a while. Although they can buy it out pretty easily if they want it. Yeah, they really they want him that much. But, um, yeah, maybe put Paul Heyman in there. <laughs> <laughs> the Walrus be, versus he would be Kyle the SWAT O'Reilly. of the Samoan SWAT team. <laughs> Yeah, he would definitely be. Yeah, he'd be the swatter, um, <laughs> or the squatter. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about NXT. There you go, ladies and right. gentlemen. Uh, he's got uh, T McAfee, the brand, and I've got Undisputed Era, and that wraps up our NXT predictions. However, there is time before the pay per view starts, and I want to know who you guys have got. Comments are below. There's a reason you can type whatever you like down there. You can call me a cunt if you like, but ultimately, I want you to tell me who you think is going to win all these matches. And if we get enough people making predictions, maybe we'll have a cheeky giveaway. But that depends on you guys watching this and leaving your predictions below. Like, subscribe, share. And while you're at it, check out my boy Jay Miller's podcast, which you will see me on regularly as well. Sly Fox Sports Podcast. Some of the most unabridged, offensive, and honest sports coverage you will ever get in this lifetime. I assure you of that. You may not love sports, but you will love our insanely rude brand of coverage when it comes to sports. But as far as the wrestle plug goes, which is, uh, is that, um, oh, I thought you were going for the Sly Fox brand. I have no idea what that is. JM. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I, I wish I could do an S and an F. That. W P <laughs> <laughs> WrestleBob for life. Um, yeah, ultimately though, ladies and gentlemen, leave your predictions below. Like, comment, subscribe, the usual jazz, and of course hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications of all of our forthcoming content. Oh, punch the bell. The punch that bell. Not punch it. Don't punch your TV screen. Don't punch your computer. That's dangerous. Punch and then ultimately that bell. you're gonna have to ring up some IT technician who looks like Leon Ruff to fix things for you. That's not <laughs> Uh, but anyway we're out ladies and gentlemen we'll catch you very soon for more content from the wrestle plug word